So welcome back. We are still in Subnautica. I am still looking at the dead Aurora. I am going to spend a little bit of time in here deciding whether or not I want a knife or a fins. Or wait, I can have both because I have a second one of these seed pods. I don't have to make decisions, which is my favorite type of, of deciding. Um, and hey, the blushes are all mine, by the way, with you saying nice things about me on your channel. So... Uh, but your your way is a wonderful way, and I appreciate that you were inspiring and, and said good things about about how you can make a channel uh, just because you thought it would be a fun thing to do. And so I appreciate that, Durangatang. And apparently, Durangatang stole this this from their experience making videos with Daniel Floyd, who is also somebody I watch on Playframe, and if I remember to, I will put a card linking to Playframe. I have put other cards linking to Durangatang's channel in my uh, State of Decay videos. I will put a card linking to Playframe, uh, if I remember to, uh, right here in this video. So, let's make... Oh no, did I just make myself two pairs of fins? The fabricator draws from available data to provide environment <laughs> no. okay, good. equipment using locally available materials for your safety this second. Yes, I know. Building observatory with chair is a great way to have those sorts of conversations. Uh, but I did want to watch the sunset as well. Uh, and now I'm going to build myself a knife. Uh, because now I can murder things and I like We're being able to kill things if I need to. Following the massacre is a on lighter Abraxas than air. The knife remains the only exception. Let's kill this, get this too. An air bladder. I don't, I don't know what that does. Um... I, I don't think I ever saw Durangatang use this one. See, the, you were right, Smug Rainbow Pony, this is definitely mostly a um, a raw playthrough because I don't remember a lot of things because my memory is, is bad. So you get to see someone who doesn't know much about the game despite having watched a complete playthrough um, with the benefit of simply not having a good memory. Um, all right. Let's empty out my inventory a little bit. And you had asked a question about uh, how we relate to, basically how we relate to our tunes in video games. Uh, and it turns out that to some extent we can form, um, we can project ourselves into the characters in our video games and a well-designed game uh, will do that where we see ourselves in these games. Um, and then see ourselves in the characters. And that's why a lot of protagonists in games are silent protagonists. Uh, because when the protagonist speaks, that... I can't, I can't see the bottom here to know what I'm holding. Uh, when the protagonist speaks, that puts words in our mouth. So by having a silent protagonist, we end up with a main character that we can better relate to and that becomes us more readily and i'm, I'm gonna knife you yeah let's go ahead oh i flipped the knife look at that <laughs> i'm ba just like that right i am not ba i would not be flipping knives but my character is i would be doing this i would be scanning everything because i am, am for science uh and, and that's what I do. I still need to find caves. And I would be scared. No, I wouldn't even... I wouldn't have survived this long. I can't... I can't swim for 500 miles or whatever it is she said that... That just happened. I, I would be dead. Let's... Let's be honest here. And we project our fantasies and the things that we want to be on these characters. But we become them to, to some extent. Seconds. And that allows us to... To, to live out those fantasies and the things that we would like to be doing. Um, and uh, please give me one second because reality would like to, to barge in as well. And Baby Bear has a question for me and would like me to mute to ask the question instead of asking the question on mic. Hi, sorry about that. I, I sent Papa Bear after them because it sounds like somebody restarted the Xbox and we don't know too about that, but 
Pa Papa Bear can handle that one because I, to be honest, I wouldn't even know how to fix it anyway. I, I would go down and probably say, let's restart it. Uh, no, I don't need more acid mushrooms right now. So yeah, and one of the things that is done, I, I assume is done, and from what I can hear, I'm not a game developer, right? But one of the things that I assume is done in game development is often done in uh, writing, when we write stories, especially stories that are written in the first... What? Uh, stories that are written uh, in the first person uh, or written to be broadly read. Thirty seconds. Is oh, thank you for the warning. I'll go up and just one second. Uh, is that you try to make the the main character something you can project upon? Now, Smuggery Pony said, "I understand the the emotional connection, but the question was about allotting processes to keep track of their movements. Uh, so a lot of the same." So a lot of the same portions of the brain fire as we're trying to order, orient ourselves in the virtual space as fire when we are trying to orient ourselves in the physical space. Uh, so the orienting of ourselves in space happens in the hippocampus. So if you were to say, walk into a room and start trying to navigate around that room, your hippocampus would start a map of that room. So you have sort of a hippocampal place area that is going to figure out all of the, the place uh, markers so that you can, uh, functionally so you can remember, your hippocampus is primarily involved seconds. in memory so that you can remember that place later. And so what's going to happen? I'm going to get out of here now and then try back in later. Uh, and when you are orienting yourself in a virtual space, the same sorts of areas of the brain uh, that allow us to keep track of their position and orientation uh, are firing at the same time as well. And actually then those areas of the brain then fire when we sleep and allow us to even better remember this space the next time we go into it. Uh, to develop more long-term memories of this space. So we're we're building a map of the world in which we have to navigate uh, every time we go into it. And then uh, those same areas refire when we're sleeping so that we can... What was that? Whatever it is, I'm going to knife it. Sorry, I, I just... So, something needs to knife. Uh, sorry about that. All the explanations get brief when I have the knife things. Um, so yeah, so we are using the same area of the brain. It's not identical when we are uh, using simulated spaces as when we are in actual space. Hey, baby, your bear. Yes, I'm playing Subnautica, and I'm talking to people about how our brain works. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Can you say hippocampus? It's like hippo campus. Can you do it? Not right now. That's all right. I still haven't found any splody fish. Because they're gonna give me cave sulfur. Cave Sulfur is going to let me make a, a, I think Cave Sulfur is going to let me make a, cave? no, a flashlight so I can see where I'm going because now I'm lost again in a dark cave. This is light. Look up. Point yourself towards the light. There we go. Don't die. Don't die. Oh, it's going to help me make a repair tool. The flashlight is battery and glass. Wait, do I have the stuff to make the battery now? I might. How do I keep swimming towards that when I keep starting off not swimming towards that? Cut creeper vine with knife. Okay. Hell no! What were you? Okay, okay, okay. I will leave your creep fine alone. I'm 
so that hell no response was an activation of the sympathetic nervous system. It is what we generally know as the fight or flight response. Get back in there. Go home. Go home. Make batteries. You've been telling me I can make this all along. Do I have acid mushrooms? I do. Oops. Keep that. Fix that. <sighs> ah. You know, Stalker is a good name for that guy because he kept following me and did not leave me alone. Did I already have glass for that? Nope. Okay. So, Smug Rainbow Pony, did I finish answering your question to your to your satisfaction? I can't remember if if I finished answering your question about. About orienting ourselves in space. Flashlight. Now I don't have to be afraid of the dark anymore. I am going to need more silicone rubber. I can't remember where I found that stuff, though. I'm going to have to find that. I can make copper wire. I don't know why I would want to do that yet. Um, I need silver, which I don't have. I already have fins. Fiber mesh. Oh, that's why I wanted to cut those, those things. But I have no way to find lead. Repair tools, silicone rubber, and that. Okay, let's make sure that we equip that. I wish that I could see what's at the bottom. Flashlight, scanner. Flashlight, scanner. Is this... Can I, can I drag the knife down and be like, knife, I want you to be... Yes, I can. Okay, so I want it to be flashlight, knife, scanner, fire extinguisher, flare. There we go. Huh? Stop it. That didn't work. Whatever. All right, so Spugman Pony says, you said it was mostly the same process and not a different entity, which answers the question with enough information. All right, excellent. All right. So, I feel like that guy was trying to keep me away from stuff, but I wanted it. And what's that? All right, and I promised that in this video I would explain... Ah, oh, creature egg. Yay. Um, I promised in this video, or I said in this video, that I would explain why I am uniquely not qualified for these sorts of games. And that is because a while back, uh, I went on a ride uh, at an amusement park. 30 seconds. And it resulted in an injury where the crystals in my ear... Uh, the otoliths, and those are the ones, remember, that are sensitive to movement, both up and down movement, side to side movement. Those are the ones that are sensitive to gravity. They broke off. Uh, apparently, crystals breaking off can be a natural part of aging, uh, but they can also happen as a result of, of trauma, and not, uh, and in this case, I mean physical, physical trauma, and in this case, for me, it was going on this ride, uh, and it was a, a Gravitron type ride, one of those rides that, what are you? Uh, one of those rides that plasters you against the wall of the ride while you're riding it. Uh, and so these crystals broke off and they got into the fluids that are not supposed to be uh, gravity sensitive. And created vertigo. 
Uh, and not only that, but they created it in both my ears, which is a very rare presentation of the symptom, of the, the problem. Uh, and in such a way that it took a lot longer for it to heal than it usually would. The treatments didn't quite work the way that they were supposed to. Uh, and I spent a really long time with the fluid centered, the fluid part of my brain or my, my middle ear sensitive to gravity and it's not supposed to be. But also any time the, the crystals would shift, they would create waves in that fluid and my ear would signal to my brain, uh, hey, your head is moving when my head was not in fact moving. And so my eyes would shift, right? That's that's what it's supposed to do. Hey, your head is moving, your eyes shift. Uh, and so my eyes would move. And this is what creates, if you've ever heard somebody who had vertigo say that it looked like the world was spinning, uh, that's actually their eyes moving when they're not supposed to. And it's something called nystagmus. Uh, so you could actually watch their eyes. My inventory's full. Oops. Uh, that You could actually watch their eyes do this. Uh, it's a little bit weird to look at 30 seconds um can i let's get to the the surface ah you smug rainbow pony says that sounds very familiar uh have you have you had that happen before where your eyes have freaked out like that I, how do i swipe it with a knife there's that thing again it's really mad at me <laughs> did i get any of it what do you mean I have a brain? Oh, that's a creature egg. <laughs> Looks like I was holding somebody's head. Ah, so Smug Raven Pony has also experienced this type of vertigo. Um, and so I am going to drop some of my titanium for a second because I did not come all the way out here and deal with that guy trying to murder me to not get some stuff. I want whatever it is that I get when I hit this with a knife. Now I will leave you alone. Now I will go away, I promise. Um, and for Smug Rainbow Pony, it lasted a few months before it went away on its own. Um, and for a lot of people, that's how it happens. Uh, and it's sort of a, a random vertigo for me. Uh, that That's how it was happening too, except I spent nearly all of that time experiencing vertigo anytime I would move my head. Uh, I stumbled around as if I were intoxicated for much of that time. Uh, which was awkward when I was going in to teach and I would have to uh, explain to my students I promise I am not in fact intoxicated even if every once in a while I have to grab uh, the the lectern in order to steady myself what more can I make new things now no but I got a new blueprint for a pathfinder tool Oh, I just turned my creeper vine into rubber. But I need to do them anyway. Alright. Put the egg in there. I need to eat some fish. Gary, I'm sorry, but you're getting eaten for dinner. Um... It is common for those accustomed to synthetic foods to be repulsed by eating an animal carcass. Remember that humans survived this way for millennia. You can too. Oh, am I supposed to not like eating that because I'm used to eating those bars? <laughs> and here I am like, yeah, I do not want to eat a nutrient block. Oops, I didn't mean to consume that. Oops. All right. What's, what's my next goal? So yeah, I'm sorry you've experienced that. It is not very pleasant. Uh to go through. Uh, but I, I understand, I understand what you went through because I, I have gone through it as well. Um, I don't have any silver, I just need to find it. 
lead I would need to find. What do I need for fiber mesh? Two creep vine samples, so I actually have to go get another one of those to just keep it around. And I still haven't found the cave sulfur, <laughs> which I need to go find. And some more of those seeds. So that's what I'm going to set as my goal now. And I think it's time for me to make one of those locker things. Yes, let's make a locker. Gimme. And this is where I'm going to put all of my titanium for now, because I have a lot of it. And I will put other things in here. I'll keep a little bit of titanium up here. Um, but for the most part, let's put titanium in there. Uh, yeah, it gets it gets hard to move around because every time you move your head, uh, that your head is not it, it's sending the wrong signals. And it, for each person who experiences it, it's experienced in a different way. Uh, so it, it's hard to know right exactly what what caused yours. Uh, I know exactly what caused mine because uh, because I had it diagnosed. How do I place the locker? Oops. There we go. All right. Um, so yeah, I know exactly what caused mine, uh, because I went and had it diagnosed, uh, but yeah, it's it's hard to really know what to do, and you you have to just not move. Oxygen. Yep, breathe. Sorry about that, man. I should definitely breathe. All right, let's go on a hunt with my new. Oh, I have gold. Oh, I can salt some fish. Fishy, 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 fishy. So yeah, so that, that system that we have, we take it for granted, right? That our system is just going to work properly uh, and that we are just going to uh, be able to have our balance and walk around and orient ourselves in the world whenever we want to. Uh, but, and that we'll do things like track objects in the world when we move our heads, and that that's just going to function the way that it's supposed to. Um, I always forget to check where the ship is. But when these systems break down, uh, they break down in some pretty spectacular ways. Okay, ship. Not ship. And, and it can lead to a whole lot of dysfunction. Before I had this happen, I was able to play games like this a little bit more. I would, after a while, I would uh, get dizzy and need to uh, and need to stop. I was I've always been the type of person who gets motion sick. Uh, afterwards, I stopped being able to play them pretty much entirely for a while. Uh, I still can't play or watch something like... Why? Why do I end up facing that way? Uh, something like Minecraft. Uh, and am surprised that I have been able to play this for as long as I have. Uh, it's... And part of it is I'm playing it while I am while I'm still awake. The more tired I get, the, the harder that system has to work. And the more difficult it becomes to keep that orientation break your flashlight doing that, you know that, right? Uh, the, the harder it is to to play and to be able to continue doing this. Uh, so late at night, I have a much harder time watching games that are first person um, and engaging in them than I do during the morning. 30 seconds, new creature discovered. Woohoo, shiny fish. Um... Smug Raymond Pony asks, do I notice the edge of my screen being a scuba mask? 
Uh, yes, but only sometimes. Um, the scuba mask seems to come and go. Am I... 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 Oh, it comes and goes when I'm not in the water, doesn't it? It disappears when I get out of the water. I think I needed more of this, didn't I? I feel like I needed one more of these. And I feel like I needed one more of this. So I'm gonna get one more of each of those. But what I really need... Is cave sulfur. Caves. Caves. Silver. Silver. Wiring. Kits are an essential component of many habitat modules. Something needed silver. If I'm in a place that has silver... Does that mean I'm not in the place that has caves sulfur? I didn't think cave sulfur was this hard to find. I don't remember it being this difficult. How? How how is the ship now between myself and the Aurora? Oh it isn't. Okay. I'm gonna head back now. I'm gonna go through caves to do it. Gary? Why are you in the wall, Gary? Mine now. That's what you get for clipping. <laughs> what are you? What are you? Egg. Excellent. I have no idea what you're useful for, but I am going to take you. So yeah, oh, what is that? Is there, what's coming out of there? <laughs> oh, yep, as I expected, it's stupid to, is it entirely stupid to just go over that? Or did, oh, it, it explodes all the time. Okay, okay. I, I won't do the dumb anymore. Ah, so Atherin came. Uh, and Atherin has suggested that maybe my mirror neurons aren't um, triggering as strong of a balancing reaction in this game because I know I'm underwater and swimming. Uh, and buoyancy uh, makes it take up less energy and swimming. Where is my ship? Uh, and that, that may be the case that, so now I have, uh, I'm going to get into a slight discussion of mirror neurons for those who have not watched my, uh, ooh, don't go in there, don't go there, around, go around the death fire water stuff, uh, so who haven't watched, uh, my playthrough of, or the start of a playthrough of Empathy Path of Whispers, uh, with a quick regard to mirror neurons. So the way that mirror neurons work is that we have um, a system within our brain that is designed to trigger when we see other people experience things. And it triggers as if we were triggering them. So like we were looking in a mirror or it's a mirror to what we see other people experience. Um, and it is, to some respects, uh, a core system in terms of our experience of empathy. A hoop fish. I'm just going to straight up eat the hoop fish. So, for instance, if you've ever seen somebody stub their toe and it kind of hurts your toe too, and you, you wince and you're like, oof, that is the mirror neuron system responding. And one of the ways that we experience an emotional connection to the... Uh, the tunes that we play in video games, right? The character in video games is through this mirror neuron system. And so Smug Rainbow Pony uh, points out that the ouch that hurts when you see somebody get stabbed in a movie. Exactly right. That's the mirror neuron system acting. Um, <clears throat> and so one of the ways that we find video game characters relatable is through this system. I can create a high capacity tank now. Two glass, four titanium. I think I have that. Or the capability to make it. I 
I think I can do this now. Did I make one glass or two glass? That made one glass. Okay. So that happens within our, our mirror neuron system. And as Athrun points out, uh, you can even feel the pain, right? It, it registers potentially as painful to you. And I, I have a standard O2 tank. Can I, can I take it off? Now can I use it? Ha ha. More oxygen for me. Oh, it didn't give me that satisfying boom. I am sad. And there was something else. What was what were some of the other things that I thought I could make? Uh, so yes, yeah, so that all registers within the mirror neuron system. And I have that pathfinder tool. I can make a pathfinder tool. Well, let's let's do it. Uh, copper wire and another one of those seed clusters. Uh, and that's how we, it, it, it's a basic component of how we relate to others and understand the, I need another seed cluster, uh, gain an understanding of the experience of others. I need more titanium. I'm making another locker. Uh, and I'm going to put all my, I think all my eggs in a locker just to separate them out because I I can't not collect the eggs I think they're cool uh, but I need more titanium to make a locker and at least so it's at least a, uh, a central component of how we experience what's known as effective empathy what do I need to make a locker for gosh dang it uh, effective empathy, that is uh, an experience of other people's emotions and feelings. Uh, there's another type of empathy that's known as cognitive empathy uh, or perspective taking, understanding people's thoughts, uh, but that's kind of an entirely separate system. I actually go into the distinction between cognitive and effective empathy in, in that video, in Empathy Path of Whisper. So again, if I have a really good memory, I will put a link uh, to that discussion uh, at this point in the in the video so that folks can take a look. Now, let's see. Where is... Where is it? There we go. Now I want to use it. And I use things by pressing this button. Yes! And I'm going to rename it. Come on. No, I don't want to open it. I want to get close enough to rename it. See, like, things like this right here where I have to really precisely mess with the camera, uh, these are the sorts of things that cause the most vestibular issues uh, where you're really messing with the camera. So why do I do it? I don't know. I'm going to call this Eggies. Uh, no, it, it's the reason it causes it is uh, because of the precision with which you're you're asking the vestibular system to respond, uh, and and how that precision uh, kind of highlights the the fact that uh, you are not in fact experiencing that uh, in the real world. All right, I have another eggy, don't I? Yeah, get out of here. these in here for now. Cured. Oh, you're old. Are you going to make me sick? You are. Let's let's nom you now before you make me any sicker than you already do. And let's make a goal. We're going to get more of those vines so that we can make a pathfinder tool for those seeds so that we can make a pathfinder tool and we are going to continue our ever-present quest for cave sulfur. I 
And Smug Rainbow Pony is trying to convince us uh, that they have never been that empathic. Um, and that maybe to emotional pain, uh, more than physical though, that they've been more empathic. Uh, which, I don't know. I find that a lot of people who try to convince me that they're not empathic really just um, are comparing themselves to, to folks who are are either very highly empathic or who have a what are you uh a misunderstanding of what it means to be empathic right uh so for instance you very quickly were able to to generate this idea of when i see somebody let's go this way when i see somebody smack their leg uh, i say ouch too that's a form of empathy uh when you if you're an easy crier when watching dramatic movies, uh, that is a form of empathy. In fact, dramatic movies intentionally use the dramatic story arc to produce empathy in order to to bring you into the story and to get you engaged. I've been in there a million times. Uh, Jedi, find find someplace else to go. Someplace with with more cave sulfur. Hey, what's this? Sea glide fragment. One of two. I like to scan myself. It's fun. Um, but that's that's a sea, half of a sea glide. That will make me go fast. Gotta go fast. I want a cave. breathe oh look at how much oxygen i have i don't have to breathe yet oh man look at my o2 that's amazing i love this new tank already it's so wonderful gotcha i gotcha hello red fighter mew mew to you you too fluffy red fighter is my fluffy I, I am Mama Bear and Red Fighter, Fighter is my fluffy kitty. So I got a shout out to Red Fighter. All right. All right. Ah, so Durangatang says that they're interested in, or he's interested in hearing about how much um, brain physiology I've studied in the realm of psychology, uh, because in their head, neurology and psychology have more ties to the physical brain, and um, and psychology has had less ties to the physical brain and has been slightly uh, a softer, more experiential approach. Uh, and from listening to me, maybe that assumption is wrong. Uh, and yeah, to some extent, that assumption is wrong. Uh, there's, there are many different fields of psychology uh, and many different branches. So there are absolutely branches of psychology that focus on the experiential uh, and that focus less on the brain. But e each person who studies psychology is going to, at the very least, to get a generalist education uh, and cover information in the brain. So for example, I teach an introductory psych course and the third lecture topic that we go into, uh oh, I froze. Uh, the third lecture topic that we go into has to be biopsychology. And when I say have to, has to, uh, what I really mean is that if I don't teach it in that order, my students start to struggle when I get to some of the later don't electrocute me later topics because as we talk about uh some of the psychological principles those those things are inherently biological in nature and so we can't come to a, a full understanding or a complete understanding of what's happening uh, in terms of human experience and human behavior without understanding the underlying brain structures uh, and the uh, neurology that goes into it now, there are definitely different psychologists, especially when it comes to research and practice that focus on the brain. Uh, so neuropsychologists absolutely are going to focus more on the brain and on treating the brain uh, than 
um, a, a therapist or a psychotherapist might. But in terms of getting an, an understanding of human behavior and experience, you absolutely have to have an understanding of... Ooh, cool. Uh, you have to absolutely have to have an understanding of all of them uh, in order to to really... Oh, no, 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 no. What did I just do? Well, I'm going to find out what this bladder does because I am going up whether I want to or not. Um, so it went up to the top. Is it gone now? It's not gone now. It is reusable. Okay. So if I accidentally use that thing, it's okay because I will get it back. <laughs> okay. I just need to make sure that up is definitely, um, is definitely oxygen. Okay. Sorry about that. And so uh, I think additionally, uh, listening to me might give a, a different impression than what than you might, might traditionally get, in part because I am a generalist. So I, um, I don't specialize in the practice of any field of psychology. I teach psychology. And so my focus is on all of the fields of psychology. Um, and and Durangatang has has clarified that they think it's a that he thinks it's a good approach, uh, just that it was surprising, um, and so I'm I'm very glad. I just wanted to to sort of go into it because it is a, a good thing to talk about and uh, a common misconception. It's it's not just you uh, that thinks that this is this is a common question that we get. And um, the psychology is often referred to as a soft science or not a science. Um, or divorced from an understanding of the brain and a lot of and a lot of my students think that as well that uh, they come in and I start talking about biopsychology and I get the question why do we have to learn this I took psychology so I didn't have to take biology uh, and so it's it's actually one of the things that I often have to explain is that everything psychological is is also simultaneously biological now, I will say that I am not a specialist in biopsychology. Uh, so, uh, when I speak off the cuff here, I often give slightly less detail than I would in other topics. Uh, so let's let's try using this thing again. Oh, I can't find it. I don't have it. Well, that's not useful. Oxygen. I'm trying. I'm gonna die. I'm going to die without this. Save me. Nope, it couldn't save me. <laughs> oh. That is death number what? Is that three? Yep, I think that's death number three. I am back at my... All right, I am I am back here. Oh, I still have my eggy cuz I didn't put it down there. Oops. Oopsie daisy. Back I go again. At least I didn't find any. At least I didn't find any um any cave sulfur. And during a tang, yes, I am also having UX sadness because I thought that that was in my inventory and that I could very quickly switch to it, and it wasn't. Um, I, I don't even know what was in my inventory that was in its way. So, and I, I haven't yet. I'm going to have to off off stream figure out how I determine what's placed where in that inventory so that I can at least better manage that. Oops, I didn't want to pick that up. Oh well. I think I've been through this cave like a million times. What am I doing in here? Why am I even doing this? Okay. More caves. I hear you laughing at me. I hear you laughing because because I'm going in the same caves over and over again. 
trying to find this sulfur. Oh, wait, I haven't picked up this. Is this a cave? That I haven't been in yet? Oh, someone just tried to blow me up. Where is it? Where is it? Ow! It hurt me. Where was your home? Where was your home? Where'd you come from? This is the right cave. I just have to find where you... Well, first I'm going to go breathe. Then I have to find where you came from. What's up, baby bear? Baby bear would like me to mute? Yes, baby bear is, is calling me out on the fact that I've been playing this game for a while and I was going to play three games. And, and one with me. And one with baby bear, yes. Um... But I need to find cave sulfur. What? Because it's been bothering me? What do you mean? Because I have been searching for cave sulfur pretty much the entire time that I've been looking for it. And you know how sometimes something just gets stuck in your... And I found it. Ha ha! You know how something, sometimes something just gets stuck in your brain and you just you have a goal and so you just need to meet that goal before you can be done? Yeah, that's what just happened here. I had that happen to me. And so you can understand that, right? Baby Bear just cognitively empathized with me. Baby Bear was able to say, you know what? I've experienced something like that and I can figure out what you were thinking. And Baby Bear has, has thought the same sort of thing. And so, but I just found Cave Sulfur. So I'm going to go back to my pod. And then I'm going to build the thing that I've been trying to build this whole time. And then I will be, uh, I'm going to check how long I've been playing this session. And then I should be okay. Baby Bear is very excited because we were going to talk about uh, something about psychology. And Baby Bear loves to talk about psychology-related things. Uh, and, and, like to learn about and learning about psychology. Uh, and so Baby Bear is excited. But what I just got all the stuff to make was this repair tool. So you see how my pod is <laughs> it's all broken? I can make the repair tool, which is what I said as my goal when I first got started was I wanted to get rid of that. So now I just need one silicone rubber and one titanium. And I have those. So I have silicone rubber in here. And I have titanium down here. I have lockers down here. Uh, uh, right here. The spinning around also doesn't help, of course, because it makes you... It just makes you dizzy. I'm going to put this eggy in this locker. Oh, you know what? I can turn that metal salvage that I have into titanium that's already in my inventory. And so Durangatang says that anytime you select something, it enters the left side of your UI and potentially pushes something off the right side of the quick bar. Uh, and unfortunately, the way that I have, I have to fix the, um, for next time, I have to fix the way I have things. I can't actually see my quick bar right now. Um, so that makes it even worse for me. Because I have the uh, the screen set up very wrong. Because I am a, a bad streamer. So here we go. We are going to create our repair tool. You're not always going to be a bad streamer. You're right. I'm just new. Thank you. That was a very good affirmation. Baby what? Bear is very positive. What does affirmation mean? It means that you helped me feel better. Oh, I should probably eat and drink something. Um, because my person was hungry and thirsty. But now, so I, oh, I went in there, though, to, oh, I think I did equip my repair tool. So, but that, thank you, that is very useful for me to know. And then, did I not equip the repair tool? Where, where is the repair tool? Put that in. So then that entered the left side of my quick bar. And here we go. Now, I can repair. Why is it so dark? Uh, it must be nighttime. And because the lights didn't work. Running full environment diagnostic and outputting results. Now fix the radio, fix the radio. Yes, I'll fix the radio, I'll fix the radio. You don't fix the radio. 
I will fix the radio. I will fix the radio. If you want to take this into the other room, you can listen to what happens when I fix the radio. Sure, sure. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Go bring it into the other room. There we go. Up and running. Radio online. Broadcasting emergency Radio distress online. signal. Broadcasting emergency distress signal. Oh, yeah, it's going to tell me that. Now let's play the message. This is what I've been waiting for. This is the reinforcement for finding all of that cave sulfur and dying three times in the attempt to do it. This is Aurora. Distress signal signal received. Rescue operation will be dispatched to your location in nine. 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 Hours. Continue to monitor for emergency transmissions from other life pods. Okay, so this is the Aurora. You're basically not getting rescued anytime soon. Um, listen for other people. I'm gonna go put this egg away. Um, Alright, so I was rewarded with uh, a lack of hope. But uh, try to find other humans. They might bring you hope. And that's pretty much exactly what you would do, right? Try to find the other humans on this planet if you can, because you presumably were with other humans when you came to this planet. Uh, and somehow, I managed to get in through... Uh, I managed to get through another session of Subnautica without uh, my vestibular system causing me significant problems, which is very exciting for me, because I am enjoying playing Subnautica uh, and will... Potentially come back to it if I think of other things that I want to discuss that are psychology related in Subnautica. I think some of the things that we might discuss in future sessions, if folks are interested, will have to do with uh, our affiliation with other human beings and how important it is that we have contact with others. And uh, additionally, uh, <laughs> Mama Bear Psych, uh, which is actually a baby bear on um, in, in my account so that uh, she can watch the stream, has pointed out that we're going to be rescued in a long time, yes, but nine, 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 nine years is beyond the lifespan of a human. So functionally for uh, the state of my character, that is never. Uh, and so uh, thank you so much for coming and watching. Thank you, Durangatang, for giving, coming in and uh, and sharing on the stream. Very exciting to see you there. Uh, and I'm glad to share my expertise. Have fun uh, going and doing some family stuff. For those of you who did enjoy hearing us talk about uh, psychology-related things, you can uh, subscribe to the channel or uh, the watch the videos <laughs> sequence or come to the Twitch. Come to the Twitch where you can see us live and ask your questions. And I can go in uh, and give answers to those questions. And we can have a discussion about psychology. So hopefully we'll see you there. Those of you who are on the stream, hang tight. Uh, we are going to switch over to another game and continue talking about psychology in video games.